G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel as the trade period wears on and as trade period wears on and this will continue till November uh, we are getting new and more varied rumours around Harley Reid and the intrigue around pick one. It's difficult to sift through the a lot of crap that gets reported around this time of year so uh, I'm going to try and keep it to stuff that actually seems worthwhile dissecting um, and today I am going to start this video by running a clip by Sam McClure or Sam McClure from the Tradies podcast, which he does with Mitch Cleary. Now, for a little bit of background before I run the clip, uh, 12 weeks ago, you may or may not remember that Sam McClure broke the story, if you want to call it that, that Harley Reid was adamant that he didn't want to go to the West Coast Eagles and that he was unwilling to play there generally. Um, and then this kind of got a little bit of backlash at the time. They talked about it on Footy Classified. He kind of backstepped a little bit. It was largely quashed. It was then reported that Harley Reid was upset by the rumor. So we didn't make too much of it um, following that. However, he has kind of doubled down in the most recent podcast with Mitch Cleary. And uh, I'll let you just watch the clip first. Harley Reid, we spoke about North, all those picks they've got. They'll give up a mother of a deal to get to pick one, I think. I just don't think West Coast will pick him. Well, that's So you do the deal for one then? and you. But I, I, but I wouldn't do the deal if I'm North. So you think you, you play got, the buff? You got and two you, and three, right? Yeah. Just say, pick him. Go on. Do you want to pick one? Nah, you're not going to pick him. We don't need it. We're going to get him at two. Pick him. I haven't really heard that approach. I don't. They're not going to pick him, Mitch. They're not going to pick him. He doesn't want to go there. So everything I said before Can't about doubling down on this for all the shit that happened twelve weeks ago. People in the West are listening. He doesn't want to go there. So everything I said before about North Melbourne having to give up, they don't have to give up much for pick one, you don't reckon? That's the, the fact don't, that West Coast... They don't are, need pick one. They're going to get him at two. Mitch, I'm telling you, they're not going to pick him. So a pretty interesting clip. Uh, I, I must say the, the certainty that McClure speaks with uh, has me a little bit curious and I should clarify an important point for you people. Um, any McClure with two C's in their name evil. You really want to be dealing with McClure's with one C in their name. It's uh, usually a sign of being a little bit more legitimate. Mark McClure is a different one. He's M-A-C. I don't know. That's kind of a whole weird offshoot in itself. We don't really deal with the McClure's, but it's the MCLs you want to deal with. Uh, and I'm not referring to the knee ligament. Anyway, uh, where am I going with that? Look, breaking down this, this clip, uh, which is interesting to me, there's three main takeaways we can take from it, okay? First of all, Sam McClure is adamant, adamant, that Harley Reid does not want to go play for West Coast. So he's doubling down on something that he said 12 weeks ago. He's also adamant that West Coast, even hypothetically, they go to the draft with pick one, they're about to be on the clock. He's adamant that West Coast would still not pick Harley Reid in that instance. Can I just say as an aside, before I start to dissect this even further, the idea that West Coast would go to the draft holding pick one and pick Dan Curtin just because he's West Australian, that notion infuriates me. And the third point he makes is that North Melbourne should call West Coast bluff let them go to the draft with pick one and they will take Harley Reid at pick two. So the interesting thing about this as well is like 12 weeks ago since the story broke and then it kind of just got, you know, swept away. Um, there wasn't too much of talk about it, certainly not from the McClure camp or the Tradies podcast in general. And since then, everything we've heard about Harley Reid, um, and I've been paying attention to this because I'm a West Coast fan, but everything kind of suggests that he is willing to go to West Coast. Uh, he has said it explicitly that he'd be willing to go play anywhere. Um, people have come out and spoken on on his behalf. West Coast have come out and said there's no concern around taking Harley Reid and they even went as far as to suggest they're more likely to keep pick one than trade it. Now, having said that, I will say this. You'd be a fool to take anyone on face value and take what they're saying as gospel in this scenario. Just because Harley Reid says he's willing to go play for West Coast does not mean he's actually keen to go there. By the way, it's really not a case of willing. He is a draft system. He is going to be on a default three-year contract. He has to go to West Coast if they pick him. But, you know, if he was secretly gunning for, you know, a Vic club to, to take him instead, uh, he's not going to make that public. Equally, West Coast are not going to come out and say, oh, no, we're kind of spooked by the Harley Reid rumors. We might actually do something with the pick. It completely weakens their negotiating power. So, you know, while questioning the Sam McClure story, you also have to be cognizant of the fact that nobody's actually saying what they actually feel right now. Harley Reid might not be lying. Rowan O'Brien might not be lying. But we can't just accept that because they say these things in public that they are necessarily true. But this is where it's a little bit curious for me because the entire story is coming from Sam McClure uh, via the Tradies podcast. So this, this logic, it relies on Harley Reid, you know, being fairly clear with West Coast saying, I don't really want to go play for you. And then being like, okay, but keep that to yourself. I mean, I suppose that's possible. It just seems a little unlikely that nobody other than Sam McClure has heard about this. However, putting that aside for a moment, 
There is a clear logical flaw for the points that Sam McClure makes in this podcast. He suggests that North Melbourne should call West Coast Bluff and say, hey, no, you pick him. You pick him. I oh, have a little smug look on his face as he says it. For the record, uh, I'm going to play the ball melt the man on this issue. I actually have no real issue with Sam McClure. But, you know, when he's looking that smug and making an illogical argument, I need to dissect it. But the idea, like I said, that North Melbourne don't need to trade for pick one in this instance because West Coast is just going to let Harley slip through is uh, is crazy. Whether he likes it or not, there is going to be, you know, trade offers for Harley Reid um, throughout this trade period. And why would West Coast knowingly go to the draft with pick one, not trading it if they're not interested in Harley Reid, why would they just go pick Dan Curtin? Second of all, you've got to be cognizant of the fact as well that this is not just a case of North versus West Coast and North calling West Coast bluff. If West Coast don't deal with North Melbourne for a trade, Melbourne is very, very keen. Melbourne need to trade for pick one to beat out North Melbourne. And that works in reverse too. If North actually want Harley Reid and pick one, they need to beat Melbourne's offer for pick one. So this idea that West Coast is going to go to the draft and then let Harley Reid slip through, it's just logically, it's a non-starter. So assuming for a second that uh, Sam McClure is right, that West Coast are not going to take Harley Reid or are not interested in picking him at pick one, it's not a case of West Coast versus North Melbourne here. It's a case of Melbourne versus North Melbourne. Who is going to get the better offer for pick one? And I don't know the answer to that yet. So we know that there have been some negotiations between North Melbourne and West Coast at this point. Like a few weeks back, uh, there was an article suggesting, uh, I think it might have been Ryan Daniels, but again, I don't want to misquote, uh, but suggested that the Eagles were holding out to see what Ben Mackay's compensation pick would be before getting into any uh, real talks about trading pick one. And naturally, the presumption there is that West Coast were holding out to try and get pick two and three. And it was reported uh, today, I think, that uh, the Eagles did ask for pick two and three. There may have been some other picks involved as well, but North Melbourne rejected that. North Melbourne then stumped up their own offer, which I said in the last video was 15, 18, 21, and a future priority pick. Again, this offer, offer might be obsolete because I think they've, they've traded both their future priority picks as well. But breaking that down, two late firsts, two early seconds, a huge gap. Um, the Eagles cannot enter this draft at pick 15 after finishing last. So that was kind of laughed out the door as well, I think. So there's still a big gap between um, what these clubs are willing to deal in a, in a potential trade. So before we get into what I want us to do and uh, my preferences and hopes for this trade period, I'll point out as well, Melbourne have also been actively moving up the draft order in the last couple of days. So we know that because of the Luke Jackson deal, they already had a strong draft hand. Take the strong hand. Sorry, that's a movie reference. Is that a scary movie? I think it's one of the scary movie films. Please let me know in the comments. So we know the Ds have moved up to pick six and pick 11 in this year's draft and obviously hold a future first round pick, their own first round pick tied to their ladder position next year. Uh, they apparently reportedly, uh, this is to me, said that they are only looking to take two draft picks in this year's draft. So they currently hold six 11. So there's two possible outcomes here. The Demons are just, you know, optimizing their draft hand, say six and 11, we're probably not going to get Harley Reid, uh, but six and 11 are good picks, then we'll exit the draft there. The other possibility, the distinct possibility is they are in constant talks with West Coast about what West Coast would need to facilitate a trade for pick one. And Melbourne are accumulating the pieces of that puzzle. It's possible. And then of course you consider the Harrison Petty deal, which may or may not happen. I know Melbourne don't want to trade him, but if that does go ahead and suddenly that opens the door uh, for Melbourne to get pick one, then that may happen. So we may see Melbourne unwilling to deal Harrison Petty, who's contracted for another two years. But if there is a dialogue with West Coast and West Coast say, ooh, six, 10 and 11, hypothetically, and then Melbourne decide that that's a good deal for them, uh, then we might see both deals happen. So six, 10 and 11, is that a good deal for pick one? I suppose everyone's gonna have a different opinion. I'd say it's pretty steep from a Melbourne point of view. Not sure if I'd do it. And for West Coast, that would certainly get their interest. I wouldn't say I would definitely accept it, but that is certainly in the ballpark of what is acceptable. So finally, I'm going to summarize what I want us to do in this scenario. Look, I do want Harley Reid. Uh, I don't hold any particular fears about him being homesick. You know, like even even if it's true that he doesn't want to come to West Coast, I think I've said this before. He's an 18 year old kid from the the country, moving to the other side of the country to uh, to a brand new club that is you know probably struggling on field at the moment. Of course, he's going to have fears. He's going to be daunted. He's got reportedly six clubs talking to him at the moment. They have said that they're trying to get pick one. I don't know who those six are, but we know a few of them. I don't blame the kid for probably having a preference to stay home, uh, but. The way I see it, he's going to sign a three-year deal. We have three years to turn it around. And not only do I think we are a chance to, to sell a decent future to Harley Reid within the next three years, the other part of it is like, you know, we used to be a powerful, ruthless football club. And I, I do think there's the move of a powerful, aggressive football club, a football brand, would be to take Harley Reid and back him in 
uh, to pack yourselves in to keep him and back him in to be the player that you think he is. So that is tempting to me, and, and uh, meekly just trading him for fear of losing him in a few years uh, doesn't really sit well with me. We are also in a somewhat unique position, at least in our history, where we, the, the arse fell out of the club over the last couple of years, and obviously we haven't prepared well for a rebuild in terms of drafts before 2021. So, uh, you know, the bottom part of our list is very, very exposed right now, and we do need talent fast. So there is an argument to say that, you know, if we can get a good bounty of picks, then it may be right for our list position. This is the other thing as well. This compromised nature of this draft is ball busting. For the team that wouldn't won the wooden spoon, we went from having the draft, best draft hand, uh, to having North Melbourne gifted 5,000 points worth of draft picks into this offseason. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't really, I'm not really going to make a point that North Melbourne don't deserve it or whatever like that because I know North fans get defensive and I know they'll point out that Gold Coast got more. That's aside from the point. What my point is, I've seen West Coast be the worst team this year not have the strongest hand, naturally don't get any assistance. I don't necessarily think we should have got a system, but our draft hand is plummeting and it's we it's frustrating to see us not be able to improve our position to make this an exciting period. So I've done a, a mock draft. I'm going to do one after the trade period. There's no point doing one now, but I did one and I plotted out that there's going to be potentially six academy bids between our first and second pick which means what was pick 19 at the end of the football season could become pick 29 on draft night. So to have our second pick at pick 29 in a draft where there may only be 45 picks, the next ones would be 37 and 42 approximately. That's not a very exciting draft hand. So there is something to be said for potentially getting three top 12 picks from Melbourne. Would that actually be better for our club? Possibly. There is no guarantee Harley Reid's going to be that much better than the the next kid. For me though, like I I really think we, we... don't want to enter the draft at pick six. So let's say hypothetically, we take pick six from Melbourne. That is actually pick eight. Uh, to enter the draft at pick eight and potentially pick Curtin and then a couple of other players, I haven't even really contemplated who they would be yet. It's late and I think we would want we would want pick two as part of it. And the reason is I'm a big McKercher fan. We really want to be picking for that top handful of kids. I feel like Curtin probably is slightly just out of that top group of elite players. But I don't know. I honestly like, I, I don't know if I have a strong opinion yet. Everyone should have a threshold of what they'd be willing to accept. I would want something in the top two. Uh, pick three, not so much. Reason being is I want McKercher. We'd probably end up with Dersma in that scenario. But I am going to put my faith in the Eagles to make the best decision. I think around this trade for pick space, we have a reasonably good history of getting the best outcome, at least from a uh, draft hand point of view. So I, I'm going to have some faith and try and relax a little bit about it and see what happens later and then maybe melt about it later. I do feel like there is a good chance we do trade the pick now. Um, and I'm flip-flopping and it's pretty 50-50 but I'm probably 60 40 that we don't take Harley Reid with pick one. We do trade it, uh, but not necessarily because of what Sam McClure said. So let me know in the comments your thought, guys, whether you're an Eagles fan, Melbourne fan, North Melbourne fan, just a neutral. I always look forward to your input and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.